Okay, so uh, so today's presentation. Um, so we're going to be talking about the statement of purpose. So uh, this is the first part of a, a three part workshop on state, the statement of purpose. Uh, we're also actually going to talk about the personal statement uh, and what the differences are uh, and why there are usually more workshops on statement of purpose rather than the personal statement. So uh, so this workshop's about kind of, you know, guidelines, kind of tips. We'll take a look at some excerpts from some different statements of purpose and personal statements. And then uh, the second and third workshop, they're going to actually be peer review sessions. So there's not going to be a presentation. So for number two and number three, just bring your statement uh, to the session. We'll break you out into breakout rooms and we'll have you paired actually with uh, current students. So you can ask them questions, you can read it to them, which we're trying to get as many students as we can, just so that we have small groups. You may be with a few other um, applicants though. So that's, and it just kind of depends on how many students we can get. So that one's usually a little bit more appropriate for the statement of purpose, just because as we'll talk about, the personal statement can be, there can be kind of some sensitive issues uh, in those. So, um, so yeah, so I will, um, I will drop a, a link here. So this link I just dropped in the chat. Uh, you can see our admissions requirements. There's a link to uh, the application. There's a link to all the events towards the bottom. You can register for as many events as you like uh, towards the bottom there. Um, and there's also a link at the very bottom where you can just schedule a meeting with me directly um, without you know, having to go back and forth through email. So, uh, so that's all uh, available via the link. So we're not gonna talk too much about the admissions requirements, that part. So if you have questions about that, we have several other information sessions uh, upcoming. So I would recommend um, registering for any of those. So, so yeah, so let's, uh, so let's get started. All right. Okay. Everyone able to see this okay? Can I get a thumbs up from anyone? Some, okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, so yes, we're very proud of this. So uh, for the fourth year in a row, UCLA was uh, ranked uh, the number one public, public school in the United States uh, for the fourth year in a row. So we're very proud um, of this accomplishment. Um, so uh, today, again, we're going to be talking about the statement of purpose and the personal statement. So we'll go over uh, different guidelines, tips, and what committees are looking for. Okay, so the first question is, what is the difference between the personal statement and statement of purpose? So the statement, the, the easiest way to kind of break this down is just think about the who and the why. Okay, so the personal statement is the who. This is the who question. So we wanna know about you as the applicant, who you are. So your personal motivation for applying, challenges you faced, how you overcame those challenges. So this is always good. Like we wanna know kind of your story, your ability to persevere in the face of obstacles. So the who, right? Um, so that's the personal statement. So the statement of purpose is the why, okay? Or the what. So why is our program a good fit for you? So for us, um, why social work? Um, and you know, what do you want to do after getting your MSW? So this is the why. So why social work? Why us? You know, what, what do you want to do once you finish the program? Okay, so this gives us a good idea who you are and kind of um, you know your purpose, what you want to do. All right. Okay, and this is actually on our website as well. So if you have already created an application, uh, it's actually in the link we I posted in the chat as well. Um, so what is a personal statement? And what is it used for? So the personal statement is an opportunity for you to provide additional information that may aid the selection committee in evaluating your preparation an aptitude for graduate study at UCLA, okay? It will also be used to consider candidates for the Coda Robles. Coda Robles is for PhD applicants and the Graduate Opportunity Fellowship. 
which is for master's level. So if you're applying for the MSW, it would be the Graduate Opportunity Fellowship, PhD would be Code Robles. Okay, and then to be considered for either of these fellowships, you wanna be sure to describe your contributions to diversity. Okay, and that's the main criteria for these fellowships. Okay, so your statement can be up to 500 words in length, approximately one page, single, page, single spaced, using one inch margins and 12 point font. Now, we're not gonna hold you to this. So if you're at 501, we're not gonna just throw your application in the garbage. So get, you know, stay as close to 500 words as you can, but finish your thought, right? We don't want you to just finish mid thought because you hit your limit, okay? So if you're over this, no worries. If you said everything you needed to say under this, that's fine as well. So this is just a general kind of guideline of kind of what we're looking for. And this is a UCLA requirement, okay? Both of these essays are UCLA requirements. So uh, this, the, so this information is gonna be the same for any of any advanced degree program you apply to at UCLA. All right. Okay, so these are the prompts. Again, these are on the website and they're gonna be in the application. And you don't have to, it's actually, it's probably better if you don't respond to all of them just because it's a pretty short um, limit, 500 words. So you can choose one or two um, that you think you can answer best, but the prompts are, uh, are there educational, personal, cultural, economic, or social experiences not described in your statement of purpose that have shaped your acad academic journey? If so, how? how? Have any of those experiences provided unique perspectives that you would contribute to your program field or profession? So there should be a little bit of differentiation between the statement of purpose and the personal statement, what's included. Okay, and the next one is describe challenges or barriers that you face in your pursuit of higher education. What motivated you to persist and how did you overcome them? What is the evidence of your persistence, progress, or success? How have your life experiences and educational background informed your understanding of the barriers facing groups that are underrepresented in higher education? So this may be a good one uh, if you're planning to apply for the fellowship to choose, to, to choose this one, for example. Okay, and then there's three more. How do you intend to engage in scholarly discourse, research, teaching, creative efforts, and our community engagement during your graduate program that have the potential to advance diversity and equal opportunity in higher education? Again, this would be a great one uh, if, you're playing, if you're applying for the fellowship. How do you see yourself contributing to diversity in your profession after you earn your advanced degree at UCLA? How have you been actively engaged through participation, employment, service, teaching, or other activities in programs or activities focused on increasing participation by groups that have been historically underrepresented in higher education. So as you can see, a majority of these prompts are geared towards diversity and underrepresented groups. So you would, uh, so there's gonna be a couple of different options for you to choose um, if applying for the fellowship. If you're not applying for the fellowship, feel free to choose uh, whichever you feel uh, you can best answer. All right, so here's some tips for writing a personal statement. So uh, be unique, right? So there are prompts that are provided, but think about how can you tell a unique story that will stand out, you know, using the prompts. Um, it, it could be easy to fall in the trap of, you know, just going by what is in the prompt and not providing more kind of um, clear and detailed experiences that are specific to you. Another thing to keep in mind is, depending on where you apply, your reader may be looking at 40 applications. Okay, if you have the, the bad luck of being like number 38, how are you gonna grab their attention and wake them up, get them out of their, their days, right? Uh, so number two, be relevant. Okay, write about emotional and meaningful experiences related to our program of study. I think this is very key for social work because many times it's very personally motivated. So for social work, a lot of students that we get, maybe they grew up in a, in a group home, uh, maybe they witnessed domestic violence at home, uh, maybe you know, their parents suffer from you know, separation or immigration issues. So, um, so there are a lot of things that you can pull from 
that are going to relate directly to the program of study you're applying to. So you want to connect that and make us understand your, your personal journey. Okay, and be specific. So why UCLA? How does your background or personality make you a good fit? Okay, so you say every school is a little bit different. And that could be, you know, that could just come down to geography. You know, being a school in Southern California in Los Angeles inherently is going to make us different from a school like the University of Minnesota, for example, just based on our demographics, our geography, and the different issues that we face. Uh, you know, in regards to, you know, immigration, in regards to climate change, in, in regards to um, foster care and things of that nature. And so why UCLA? So, you know, every program, so it's good to do your homework. You know, why, what makes us a good fit for you? And we'll talk a little bit more about this. Okay. Okay, so uh, just kind of due to privacy issues, I, I didn't want to use uh, personal statements from our own students. So I just pulled excerpts from different personal statements, not for social work. And it, it's, it's fairly obvious kind of based on the language, but this will give you a good feel about how much you can personalize these and how much you can kind of uh, inject like almost it's they're almost poetic so I'll, I'll just here's a couple examples so the first one the first brand new textbook I held in my hands was when I was 19 years old and a college freshman I still remember the smell of the pages the clean whiteness that had not been marked by pencil scratches and highlighted words and the second one people say music feeds the soul in my case music was literally the source of my family's sustenance for me, a future with music at its center is the only one I can contemplate. So, I mean, they're very poetic. Um, and this is uh, at different stages in, in, in the, in the, in the uh, essays. Uh, the top one is at the very beginning. So it paints a really nice picture for our committee. We, we understand, we, we have emotional connection to where they're coming from, their personal journey. So it almost puts us in the shoes of the applicant as they kind of go through this journey. So these are just like examples of how you can really inject some flavor and uh, how you can be unique in your personal statements. It doesn't have to be flat. The personal statement, it doesn't have to be quite, a, it's not quite as rigid either. So you can be a little bit more casual, I would say in the personal statement. And, you know, be as, um, be as honest and open as you're comfortable. Um, you know, obviously there's gonna be confidentiality. We're not gonna be releasing you know, your documents to anyone outside of our committee, but uh, our committee will be reading them. So that's something to keep in mind. So, um, you know, having, understanding your journey and having that emotional connection, uh, I think is, is very important for your personal statement. Okay, so here, yeah, so here are some examples from personal statements. Okay, so let's move on to the statement of purpose. So what is the statement of purpose and what is it used for? So the statement of purpose is an integral part of your application for graduate admission and consideration for merit-based financial support, the fellowships we talked about. It is used to understand your academic interests and to evaluate your aptitude and preparation for graduate school or graduate work, as well as your fit with the proposed program of study. It is also used to assess your ability to write coherent and convincing prose. So this is pretty important because both essays, we're going to look at your ability to write. Um, you know, it, it, will, it could perhaps um, increase your efficacy being a good writer, um, especially if you're interested in research. So these are really the only opportunities that we'll have to examine your strength as a writer. So keep that in mind as well. So uh, the letter, the word count is the same for the statement of purpose and the, the personal statement. 500 words, about a page, single space, one inch margins, 12 point font. So, um, so this is, you know, the difference between, so again, you know, talking about who, who and, and why. Okay, so here are the prompts for the statement of purpose. What is your purpose in applying for graduate study in your specific degree, specified degree program? Describe your areas of interest, including any subfield or inter interdisciplinary interests. 
What experiences have prepared you for advanced study or research in this degree program? What relevant skills have you gained from these experiences? Have your experiences led to specific or tangible outcomes that would support your potential to contribute to this field? Examples, performances, publications, presentations, awards, or recognitions. Okay. Okay, and then here are the final ones. What additional information about your past experience may aid the selection committee in, committee in evaluating your preparation and aptitude for graduate study at UCLA? For example, you wish to describe research, employment, teaching, service, artistic or international experiences through which you have developed skills in leadership, communication, project management, teamwork, or other areas. Why is the UCLA graduate program to which you are applying the best place for you to pursue your academic goals? If you're applying for a research master's or doctoral program, we encourage you to indicate specific research interests and potential faculty mentors. So for our program, we're not necessarily a research master's degree. So if you don't have research, uh, I wouldn't worry about this too much. So this is just if you're applying for doctoral programs or if you know master's program is very research heavy. Again, this is coming directly from the UCLA, our, our graduate studies website. So they're gonna be kind of broad in some examples. And the last one, what are your plans for your career after earning this degree? Okay, so again, the why and the what. Okay, so when you're writing your statement of purpose, the general out outline of if you're just starting out, if you don't know where to start. Um, so the general outline, obviously you would brainstorm different ideas, develop an outline, write your first draft. And the first draft is what you could bring, you know, to the, the peer review sessions, the two and three, the, the different workshops we have scheduled. Obviously, you know, 500 words, hopefully your first draft is much longer than that because it's easier to edit down than it is to edit, you know, edit up. Okay, and don't be afraid to ask for feedback. So, you know, getting, obviously getting feedback from our, our students should help. And you could always do both workshops. So you can bring your first draft to the first one, get feedback, rewrite it, and then come back for the third one at, for your final draft. Okay, so in your statement of purpose, you wanna, Introduce yourself, right? What are your interests and why? What sparked your interest in pursuing your desired graduate study, right? So why, again, why social work? Be careful not to make this portion of your statement too long. So you only have 500 words. So there does need to be a balance. Um, you know, you wanna grab the reader's attention, let us know who, who you are, and then just dive into it as quickly as you can. Okay, and then summarize, right? So summarize, don't go into too much detail. Uh, undergrad, um, some applicants have a master's degree. So it is important to indicate previous research you've been part of who is leading the research or responsibilities. Again, this is more for research degrees. If you have research, research experience, you know, by all means include that. But if you don't, don't think it's gonna be a, a negative on your application because we're not expecting this. Any papers or thesis projects you've completed and other academic projects you're involved in, uh, any work experience, especially for relevant to your field of study. So this is gonna be more relevant for us. So uh, paid work experience is great because we know you're putting in you know, 20 to 40 hours a week um, and it doesn't necessarily need to be social work. So social work is basically serving vulnerable populations, okay? so. You can, if you know, you can reflect upon what you've done in the past, and you can make arguments. You can really take a look under the hood and see if there are populations that you've worked with that um, that would be considered vulnerable. So, if you're working um, in volunteer experience, is great too, or internships. So, it doesn't necessarily need to be paid work. We know that if it's in a, a career field, you're going to be working more hours. But if that's not possible, if you don't have it, volunteer experience is great as well. So if you volunteer at your local um, Boys and Girls Club, for example, um, you could consider that, um, you know, potentially intervention. Um, there are some at-risk youth 
uh, that attend boys and girls clubs. So you could, you know, if you're helping mentor them, helping with homework and things like that, keeping them on the right path, you know, that could be considered social work. So just kind of think about your past. Um, I would say during the age of COVID, there are a lot more volunteer opportunities dealing with mental health than there probably ever have been. Uh, with, you know, with technology as well, there's a lot of apps and chat, chat services now um, that, you know, you could potentially apply, you know, you could uh, volunteer for. So, um, or you're, if you're still in school, you know, your university crisis hotline, uh, every university has one. And that's another opportunity to, um, to volunteer and to get some experience while you're a student. Okay, and then your relevance of current activities. Again, if you're currently part of projects or research, indicate how that's relevant to your field of study. So the program, we, so we wanna see what you've done in the past or currently do, doing that will help you succeed in social work. Okay, and that kind of um, goes hand in hand with our prerequisites. So we have prerequisites listed on our website. Uh, we feel having those, having done those, will help you be more success successful from day one. Um, so we're looking for any experiences that you have that we feel will contribute to your success in the program. Okay. So elaborate on academic interests. So you wanna convince us that you understand the field of say you're applying for, what it encompasses. Sometimes we have students who apply for our program and they're not quite sure like what it is or like what jobs it leads to. So that's a red flag, right? So uh, we wanna we wanna know that you, you know what you're getting into, that you know where you wanna go. So this should be very clear um, from your statement of purpose. Identify themes that are you're interested. This should include current research themes in your study. Uh, we have areas of concentration so uh, that's something out you, sh you should take a look at as well. Um, do our areas of con uh, concentration align with where you want to be, where you want to go, what you want to study? Um, you don't have to have an area of concentration determined when you apply, but uh, if you you know if what your career path is aligns with one of those areas of concentration, it will just make more sense for our committee. Um, and then end your statement with something positive, you know, uh, just finishing on a, on a strong positive note, you know, it's just a, a good way to end any essay. It will help it be memorable. It will help, you know, our, our committee remember who you are, what your journey is, uh, and feel good about you, feel positive about you. So this is always a, a great way to end an essay. Okay, so tips for writing your, your statement of purpose. So uh, I think the top one is fairly um, important for our program is be observant. So look at the program's mission statement, look at usually the department chair or the dean, they have um, a statement, kind of look at what they're looking for. Are there, are there keywords that they mention that um, you, know, you should maybe key in on that's important for the program? Okay, so for us, we uh, we talk about leadership a lot on our on our page and our mission. So that is something to think about. So that is important for us. We want to help build the next um, the next group of leaders for the future of social work leaders. So so be observant when you're doing your homework on the programs. Do your research. Um, usually, there's coursework listed uh, in the course catalog. You can look at uh, we have a plan of we have a plan of study on our website. You can look at the different coursework that's available. Um, so, are there professors you want to work with? Is there research that professors are doing that you're interested in? So, just being specific lets us know that you really want to come to UCLA because um, you can write a very general statement of purpose and submit it to every program, and that's fine. But uh, if, you, uh, if you really key in on things that are specific to us, we'll know that you've done your due diligence and we know, we'll know that you're passionate about coming to UCLA. So we asked for a resume. Uh, that's one of the uh, requirements for the application, but uh, try not to repeat what's already there. 
Rather be very specific on what you've done and the direct outcomes of your achievements. And we'll talk a little bit more about this, but being specific about outcomes, I think we think outcomes are very important because we wanna, we wanna apply what we learn in the classroom in the real world. So it's not, some, we're, not, we're not coming up with theories to sit in a lab. We wanna take it out into the real world. All right. Okay, so um, so these are some excerpts. Again, same scenario, uh, just for privacy issues. I just uh, we have some from different um, career fields, but I'll just read a couple excerpts from some personal statements. No, I've yet to meet personally with any faculty members. Christopher Hill from Modern Japanese Literature and Jennifer Robertson for Japanese ethnogra Ethnography appear to possess research interests most cl closely aligning with my own. Attending the University of Michigan for Japanese studies is a natural step for me, one I'm, one I'm prepared to take and work tirelessly for with both diligence and alacrity. I've made my decision, now I look forward to yours. I am deeply interested in the preservation of the physical book as I think it is an important part of human history, not to mention a satisfying sensory experience for the reader. However, I am also very concerned with the di digitization and organization of information for the modern world such that the book in all of its forms stays relevant and easy to access and use. So in these very brief paragraphs, it's very clear that these applicants know exactly what they wanna do. They mention specific professors and the research they're conducting that's specific to the program they're applying to. Um, and you know, again, they tell their story and their statement of purpose very, very eloquently, um, and it flows very well as well. It, it flows very well. So, and you can see the difference between the personal state, um, the personal statement, and the statement of purpose. Um, so, these are some examples of of that. I mean, sorry, this is for the statement of purpose. Apologies, at the top it says personal statement. This is for the statement of purpose. Okay, so more tips. We, we think it's good to be positive on your, um, a positive perspective is good. So emphasize everything from positive perspective. So just kind of keep in mind, um, if you're finished with school, uh, other than perhaps taking a class or two to satisfy the prerequisites, there's really nothing you can do about your academics at this point. Your GPA is not gonna change, your upper division is not gonna change. So the essays are really the most power you have over your application at this point. Um, obviously choosing, you know, choosing uh, strong letter writers, choosing the right people to write your letters, but you have no control over the letters they write. So this is, these two essays are the best way for you if you finish school to kind of have the most control over your destiny. Uh, so the second one is try to use examples for everything. Right, so don't just say you're resilient. You know, show us what, how, what you know, what's knocked you down. How did you get back up? Right, this is very, very key, especially for social workers. If you don't have resiliency, this is going to be a very tough career field for you. So you know, show us. You know, what's happening? And we all, you know, we've all overcome obstacles. You know, what are those? You know, how did you get through? So the personal statement can also be used as an opportunity to address unexplained issues, such as a gap in education. Okay, so again, the top note is to be positive. So I would try, I would not delve like too deeply into the third uh, piece there because we want, I think it's better to, to stay positive and you know, put your best foot forward. But if you're a straight A student and then you get a D in a class, we have no idea why, right? So, you know, our committee can guess whatever they feel like, but there's probably a good reason for that. Um, or if there's a quarter that you didn't behave or you didn't perform as well as you had previously, um, then there's an opportunity in the personal statement to briefly address that. You know, is was there a reason for this that um, you weren't up to your usual standards, for example? Uh, and many times there are. So it's usually better for you to tell us what happened than it is for us to kind of guess. 
because we're probably gonna be wrong, right? So, um, so this is an opportunity for you to do that um, briefly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go too far into it. Okay, and then make sure your paper connects and flows. So it can't, it shouldn't be clunky. You shouldn't be just like throwing out like beautiful quotes or, or writing in prose. It should all flow naturally, catch the reader's attention, give us the information, close out strong and memorably and in a positive, with a positive spin. And be concise. So we talked about editing, about writing a first draft. Uh, your first draft, maybe it's double this, maybe it's a thousand words. Okay, and then you just wanna cut the fat, you know, cut, cut, cut. And then get, again, you don't have to be right at 500, but try to get as close as you can um, to the 500 words. So, you know, start big, get your ideas down and then edit, edit, edit. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, so uh, yeah, feel free, you know, I'm always open to, um, it's always better to talk to people. So again, keep in mind, you know, recording, but feel if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and just speak up and we, we can talk about any questions you have. Hi, Oliver, I'm Ava. I have a question about the opportunity to do a personal statement or do they look at both essays? For the fellowship? For, yeah, so the for graduate the, opportunity fellowship. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, so, uh, so with the graduate opportunity fellowship, uh, there's a couple of different things we're gonna be looking for. Your application for the fellowship is in your personal statement only. So you wanna speak to diversity in your personal statement, but we're also gonna be looking for um, like biographical information. Like, are you a first gen student? Are you, um, did you grow up in foster care? Things like that. Those are uh, inherently underrepresented in all graduate programs. So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna look at both of those things. Yeah. Uh, so what, how that works is we look at all of those things. We make a determination and we nominate, you know, like twenty students for those, and then UCLA they actually make the final determinations for those fellowships. So that's how that works. So the deadline, if you want to apply for fellowship, is December 15th. So that keep in mind, it's a month earlier than our, our final deadline. So um, we try to schedule the workshops to give you enough time to be able to um, hopefully get your, your application in before that fellowship deadline of the 15th. But keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, great question. Hi, Oliver. My name is Raquel Delerme. Um, so I have a question. I know that this um, presentation, and thank you, by the way, um, was a bit more geared towards the MSW program. Um, however, uh, I'll be applying for the PhD program. And I know that you mentioned, um, you know, the tip of staying positive. When referencing our academic interests, would it be um, looked down upon to like critique gaps in the research and in the literature? Would that be seen as like, gearing a little bit too much. No. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question, Raquel, thank you. I think for doctoral programs, it's a little different. Uh, we want you to be as critical as possible, really, of, of the institutions, because that's, if you're a doctoral candidate, you're gonna be going usually into some kind of research capacity or uh, professorial capacity. So we, we want that, actually. We want you to be able to critique and investigate the systems that are in place and challenge them. So uh, in addition, so for the PhD, if you're interested in PhD program, there's an additional document that you have to, it's actually in the application. There's an additional essay that speaks more to research um, in for the PhD, the doctoral um, application. So those two documents plus one for that. Oliver, I have a question. Yes. Um, I'm seeing, I'm like, from what you're saying, it seems like the personal statement should be more of like a narrative of, of self, like like an individual journey. But I'm also seeing, I, I'm personally like trying to figure out where I should talk about my undergraduate thesis. And it, some of the prompts in the personal statement seem to like directly ask for like, what is your kind of right, preparation right. for advanced study in a graduate program? But then I feel like it logically would might fit better in a statement of purpose. So could you mm -hmm. speak to that? Yeah, so um, there inherently can definitely be overlap 
between the two. So if there's a class you took that informed you both like professionally as well as uh, emotionally, um, then it could, it could really fit into both uh, statements. And so it's okay if there's some overlap, but in general, it's, it's about the, the who and the why. So we're gonna learn, we, we should learn more about you a little bit more personally in your personal statement. We should learn a little bit more about you academically and professionally and uh, you kind of your motivations and where you wanna go career-wise in your statement of purpose. But if there's some overlap, you know, don't worry about that. We, we expect there, there may be some overlap. Um, I have a similar question, like for um, my motivation for applying and kind of my work experience, like a lot of my motivation I gained during my work experience. So I'm not totally sure where that fits in. Is it my choice or? Yeah, so again, you could put it in, in both. Like, so, I mean, for the same purpose, um, I, I think, for the personal statement, it could be more of um, an emotional, perhaps motivation, um, mm -hmm. something that kind of affected you on a, on a deep, more of like a spiritual or emotional level rather than an academic perhaps. So you could really put that in either state, in, in either essay or both, and you could approach them in different ways in the different essays. So uh, I would think about maybe how that experience affected you on a, on, you know, in an emotional level or more like an academic level uh, and, and, and speak to that. Okay, thank you. Hey, Oliver, is it okay if I ask a question? Yes, please. Hi, my name is Jillian. And so my question is, do you want us to specifically say what area of concentration we're hoping to go into in our statement of purpose and kind of tailor it around that? Or do you think that um, we should speak kind of more generally about our career interests? Um, I think specific, specificity is good just because it shows us that you've done your homework. Uh, you know what our areas uh -huh. of concentration are. Um, uh -huh. And we're not going to hold, we're not going to hold you to it either. Uh, many okay. students change their mind. Um, and uh, okay. so I would say, you know, whatever you feel best, you know, more, more, most comfortable with, if you feel like if you're very passionate about working with children and families, you know, speak uh -huh. to that. Definitely. It's going to make a more yes. compelling essay. Right. So are all of the, um, do you like consider applications in different pools, like based on what area of concentration they mentioned or not necessarily? No, no. So we, uh, we look at every application together uh, as a whole and some students, they don't, they have no idea. You yeah, know, yeah. they, uh, yeah, they grew up um, in a single parent home and right. they want to help children that went through what they did or, right. you know, so again, so that's a very personal thing, right? So that's kind of more of a personal yeah. statement. And that motivated them to get into social work. You know how they're going to do that. Maybe they don't know, and that's okay. Yeah. So if you know what you want to do, if you know your path, I would be very specific. Um, yeah. You know, be very open and honest about that. If you're not sure, that's okay too. But I think it's still good to let us know that you've kind of done your homework. Maybe you look at you know Professor Abrams. One of she's the chair of our department. She works at like juvenile justice. You know, I'm interested in that, but I'm also interested in you know, this professor, Dr. Astor, who kind of works on um, like gun control, like gun violence in school. So, okay. um, you know, so you could always, if you're not sure, but there's some different things that interest you, you could always mention more than one as well. Totally, totally. Yeah, that's super helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, great question. Hi, I'm Sidra. I had a question. So like, is there a better chance of getting in uh, if I apply by the December 15 deadline rather than January 15? Or like, does it not matter? Yeah, so we, um, great question. Um, so we, we do not do rolling admissions. So what's gonna happen? So this is the timeline. So uh, December 15th, on December 16th, we download every application that we have, okay? So anything that we don't have on the 16th, they won't be considered for fellowship. So from that pool, that's usually a pretty big pool, probably, I want to say two to 300 maybe. And then from there, we'll nominate who we want to nominate for the fellowship. And then we'll, every, everyone else will go to the second pool. On January 16th, download everything else. That first pool that we didn't nominate for the fellowship will go to that pool 
and then we'll make admissions decisions from there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and if you're nominated for a fellowship, you'll know before you have to make a decision. So we wanna make sure that you have that kind of financial information before, so April 15th is the decision deadline. So you'll know, we have all of our decisions out by the end of March to give you some time to think about it. But um, I would say the fellowships we usually have out probably early February, I wanna say. Okay, um, okay so uh, there's a couple questions in the chat. Can we use experience from social organizing work in higher education? Uh, I mean, you can use work experience in your resume and in your kind of your social work experience, but in terms of getting a letter of recommendation, that would be different. It would have to be someone directly supervising your work as an employer um, for your academic letter. Uh, a doctoral student is okay. Uh, many times the, you work closer with a doctoral student than you do with the professor. So for, uh, for work experience, uh, you can put that there, social organizing. But for your letters, it, it does need to be work directly supervised. Um, okay, yes. Hello. Any other? Yes. Oh, my name is Thomas. Um, so if we're applying to a joint program, like with the MA in Asian American Studies or the, or the public health degree, um, it says you can send one statement of purpose to both programs, but if you feel like, if like a person feels like there, there are different things they want to emphasize in the statement of purpose, is it okay to submit two instead of just one? You mean one for each program? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Um, so for, for most of our joint, okay, so for, for people who may not be aware, so we have um, joint programs with Asian American Studies, with the School of Law, Public Health, and Public Policy. So uh, if you're interested in any of those programs, so the way that works is you apply to both programs and you need to make sure that you're meeting the application requirements for both programs, as well as the deadlines, because they may be different. So it's the Asian American Studies one is a little bit different in that that's the only one that's one application. So that makes it a little bit confusing. Um, so for that one, you, you, can, you can definitely submit two different letters one letter for each program, but I would make it very specific um, just so that the right department's reading that letter, which letter is for which department, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. Yeah. Hi. So, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> uh, my name is Carly. I have a quick question. Um, I'm gonna be applying for the December deadlines, that way I can be considered for fellowship. So um, the information about diversity was really helpful for the personal statement. Um, so I've been thinking about that, um, but I'm wondering like for the, when I'm thinking about how I've contributed to diversity, it feels more like my, it feels more like the why. So it feels more like it would be my statement of purpose. Um, so I guess my first question is like, what you think about that. And then my second question is, do you guys all read the statement of purpose first or the personal statement first? Like, is there an order? No. So, I mean, the recommendation is to, um, to, to answer that in your personal statement, but we're gonna read both of your documents. So we're specifically looking for that information um, prior to the, de the fellowship deadline. So if you submit your application before December 15th, we're actively looking for that. So if you feel better, including that information, um, I would be very um, specific about that in your statement, just so we don't miss it, in your statement of purpose, then it's not gonna negatively affect you. We'll, we'll see it if you do, yeah, because we're gonna be looking for it. Thank you. Hey, Oliver. Um... I was wondering how much does uh, like an education gap, if you're switching fields of study, how much um, should you explain like a gap in education between an undergrad and a master's degree? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a question we get a lot. So I think the beauty of social work is that uh, we have people from like all walks of life in social work. 
for people for like a, a kid like in elementary school to know they want I mean how many kids at career day say I want to be a social worker like none right everyone wants to be a musician or an actor or whatever right so that's very rare for people to know even in like undergrad to know that you want to serve right public service like what is what is a greater gift than public service right so we understand that that's not always the case so we have people come in with bsws like bachelor's in social work uh, we do have that uh, we have people from sociology psychology come straight in from undergrad every year a handful on the other end we have people who have been working as clinical social workers for decades or they've been working in social work uh, for decades and they want to come and get their master's degree because there are certain things you cannot do without an MSW. You can't teach social work classes without an MSW. So um, so we're, we understand that. We understand that social work is a calling and it calls people at different times in their lives. Sometimes it takes 10 years of tedious, redundant, meaningless work to finally hit you like, okay, I don't want to do this the rest of my life. I want to make a difference or, you know, maybe it's econ economic, you have to pay back your school loans. So I'm going to take the best paying job I can and, and do that. So, um, so I would say if there's a gap um, with that, if it's related to social work, uh, all the better. But if it's not, I think your personal statement is a great opportunity to show us like your journey. What was, what was your journey? Why are you coming from I don't know, ballet to social work. There must be compelling reasons there. So uh, I think the personal statement is a great opportunity for you to do that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That resonated deeply. <laughs> yeah, we have people from theater. We have people from all over the place, like actors, writers, a lot of people from the arts actually, which is kind of interesting. Um, I have kind of a related question, I guess. I've been out of undergrad sure. for a long time and it, yeah, arts degree. Um, is it okay to not have the academic letter? Um, it's been like yeah. seven years and I don't really Sure, yeah. So um, we usually say around five years, four to five years. Um, try to get, I mean, if you can get two academic letters, I would say that's probably the preference just because Academic letters are more a little bit more relatable to our because our our faculty are the ones doing the reviews. So, however, if you can't if you can, if you can't get any academic letters, we understand. But uh, I would you know take a hard look at the relationships you've had in the past. As our professor said, you know once you graduate, they don't die immediately, right? They're still they're still there roaming the halls of your old college. So. Um, so just think about that. If there's any, you know, professors you, um, you know, you connected with, but at the end of the day, get the strongest letter you can. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Okay. There's a question about uh, LCSW licensure. So anybody interested in getting a uh, licensure perhaps? Great. Oh yeah. A lot of people. Great. Yes. So, um, so the beauty I, I think of our program is even though we're a research institute and we're kind of known for research, uh, we, we feel a program is clinical as well because, um, so if you go to, uh, the board of behavioral sciences, so our first attempt pass rate for the LCSW is 90%. So nine out of 10 of our students pass on their first try. And that's one of the best rates in the country every year. So we feel we prepare you very well for licensure if you want to go that route. And you can get licensure from any area of concentration. Okay, so it doesn't have to be mental health. Okay, um, so acceptance rate, that was another question. So our cohort is usually 100 students. So we get between five to 600 applications every year. This year, who knows, right? It's all up in the air. So many question marks for this year. So we'll see, but usually five to 600 applications for doctoral studies, usually around 50 to 60. Um, 
but the acceptance rate is usually around the same, between 20 and 25 percent. Um, but don't let that discourage you. Um, we usually tell people, like when, like me and my um, my colleague, Professor Dunham, you should come to one of these information sessions. He's wonderful. He, we do these information sessions together. You should come. If you haven't met him, like you'll never meet anyone like him. But um, so we do these information sessions together. And he always tells people, because we usually have about 100 people that come to these, and we have almost 100 today. Um, and our cohort is about 100 people. So he always tells people, hey, he's like, hey, it's not about are you going to get in or are you not going to get in? It's about meeting the 99 other people in your cohort, right? So just having that positive mindset of I'm already in, let's meet my classmates. So that's, you know, that's a really nice positive way um, to look at it. And we do holistic admissions, okay? So if you don't have a lot of work experience, academics are great. It's going to even it out, right? Uh, vice versa, it's going to even it out. That's why this workshop is important because you have total control over this, of this portion, statement of purpose, personal statement, you get a grade for both. So that's why this, we do this because you have, you have control over, over this part of your application. Speaking of that, Oliver, is there a, something on uh, the website, a, kind of like a rubric of our application and what is weighed compared to others? Yeah, everything's weighed e evenly. Evenly, okay. Yeah, yeah. So and we, we uh, eliminated the GRE requirement three years ago. So we're trying to eliminate barriers, right? So that's one of them. We don't consider necessarily where you went to undergrad because there's a hierarchy in that as well in, in terms of like your resources. Maybe you got accepted to Harvard, but you couldn't afford it. So you went to the local CSU. So we, under, we, we keep all of that in mind and we try to make it as fair as possible. So that's why we have the holistic admission process to give everyone a, a fair shake at, uh, at being admitted. All right, we'll take, uh, we're running out a little low on time, so we can, we can take uh, a few more questions. I have a question related to, I think I'm um, Ava, what you just said. Um, I'm Shuby, by the way, but like, I know GRE isn't required. I think I saw this somewhere on the website. Like, would you still recommend if you feel like your GPA isn't as strong that like you should submit the GRE so you have sort of like an academic number on the application or? So uh, if you have your GRE, I mean, you can submit it if you like. Uh, we wouldn't say go take it if you have a, a, low, a lower GPA just because time and money, we're always reluctant to help tell people to do things that, that take time and money. So. Um, but since it's not required, we cannot factor it in heavily into your review. If you got, you know, a certain grade on, you know, research methods or something like that, quantitative analysis, but you got a really strong score on your, your quantitative portion of a GRE, for example, then maybe our committee will say, okay, maybe she can, maybe she can do the, do the work or so uh, if you have it, you can submit it, but we can't, we can't take it into too much consideration since we don't require it. Yeah, so there was, a, uh, just very quickly. So, um, so there was a question about, uh, so Professor Dunham, um, so mentioning, okay, so, so one of the, the things about our programs, we talked about areas of concentration but one of the things that makes our program unique is if you're admitted, we'll send you a survey and we'll ask you uh, what your interests are, what your experience is. So if you're like, oh, I, I, I've always worked with children. I love children. I want to be a child social worker. We're going to put you with old people in your first year. We're going to take you out of your comfort zone. We're going to put you in a population that you've hopefully never worked with. You don't have any experience working with uh, to get you out of your comfort zone, right? Social work is about finding common ground with people that on the surface have nothing nothing in common with you, right? So if you're always 
with populations of people you're comfortable with, that's not going to help anyone. So first year, we're going to put you outside of your comfort zone. Your second year, you place yourself, okay? So your second year, you'll get to work in the setting that you want to be in. But the first year, it's going to be an opportunity for you to really explore within, right? So, uh, you know, and Professor Dunham always says this, you know, we as social workers, we always think other people need help. The people who need therapy the most are social workers, right? So, you know, look within before you can, you can help without. So, um, okay, so uh, very quickly. So the PhD program, the GRE is optional for this year only. It, it may change again, but if you're, if you're looking to apply for the PhD program, the GRE is optional for fall 2021. All right, let's take one more question. Who wants to go? Last question. Any questions? Okay, going once, I going twice. Yes, all right, right on time. Hi, um, I was wondering if, I think you mentioned this during the volunteers or during the session, one of your last sessions, but um, if you apply to the PhD program and are not accepted into the PhD program, do you, does your application then go to the MSW if you do not have a master's already? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a great question, um, Sophia. So uh, we actually have something called a combined MSW PhD degree. So the beauty of that is if you definitely want to go on to your PhD, you need a master's degree to be able to do that. So if you definitely want to go into research, you're really interested in research, you can apply for the MSW PhD degree, which will get you your MSW degree on your way to your PhD. Okay, so your first year will be MSW courses, you'll get your MSW degree, and then you'll start your doctoral studies. Okay, so if, if you're applying for the PhD program, you would need to apply for the MSW PhD combined degree in order to be considered for the MSW only. So MSW, PhD, we'll consider you for the PhD. If you're not a, a, a good fit, we'll consider you for the MSW, if you want to be. And we'll reach out to you and ask. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all right. So I dropped my email in the chat box. Um, I will we'll post this video on uh, the website at some point, hopefully probably early next week. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. The link is in the chat at the top uh, for all of our events, upcoming events, um, our link to our website. You can always make appointments with me directly. Um, otherwise, it was a pleasure. Thank you for your time today. And we look forward to reviewing your application soon. Take care, everyone. See you Thank soon. You. All right. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.